Can you believe that there was a time when you couldn't just like check out your doctor's availability online and you actually had to call in? But now there's ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Elise and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Elise, spelled E-L-Y-S-E, ZocDoc.com slash Elise. Hey, Prime members, did you know that you could be listening to this episode and every episode of Funny Because It's True ad-free on Amazon Music? That's right. Prime members get access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts. To listen, download the Amazon Music app or visit amazon.com slash F-C-I-T. With Amazon Music, you get access to the most ad-free top podcasts. Avoid the ads and listen to your favorite podcasts ad-free with the Amazon Music app or by visiting amazon.com slash F-C-I-T. That's amazon.com slash F-C-I-T. Lemonada. Okay, actually, can you just pretend that you're listening to a fully complete theme song here? I got really in my head and I tried to make it perfect and I couldn't. So this is going to be the theme song right here. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Funny Because It's True. I'm Elise Myers. I have been able to talk to a lot of people on this podcast that I've admired and really looked up to, whether it's through their comedy, their writing, or their craft. Um, Today, my guest is no exception. I am talking to producer, actress, and comedy legend, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Her Seinfeld character, Elaine, made such an impact in my life. Um, As a kid, Elaine was the first character I saw on television that wore her hair curly and natural. And it was a huge deal to me because I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, if she can embrace her curly hair, maybe I can do that too. Um, So I'm really excited for you to listen to my conversation with Julia, who of course continues to make iconic work. She's recently come out with a podcast from Lemonada Media, the people who make this show possible, um, called Wiser Than Me, where she gets schooled by women older and wiser than her on how to live a full and meaningful life. So two things that are funny because they're true. Number one, Elaine from Seinfeld influenced one of my Pinterest books boards. And that's all I can say about that for right now. And number two, after the interview, Julia asked me to bring one of my plants from the background of my like zoom camera closer to the camera to see if she could identify it with her phone app. Picture this, that plant, by the way, completely fake. I didn't have the heart to tell her that I would kill any plant that was brought into my possession, but (laughs) that's fine. (laughs) Okay. Let's get into it. Apologies in advance because I have a dog was insanely barking. Okay. And the dog walker's coming shortly, so we may have a shit show on our hands. Honestly, we've had children join mid interview. I've had to like leave f- so my husband can give me my meds for my interview. So okay, <laughs> we're okay. It. We we've all had right. it all. Yeah, it's Great. okay. H- how are you by the way? Where are you right now? Is this an office? I'm very well. I'm in Santa Barbara, California. Oh, cool. Are you? Do you live in Santa Barbara? Yeah, my husband was born and raised here, and my mother-in-law, who's 94, lives here. And uh, where are you? I, I live in Nebraska. I'm originally from California, um, which I love Santa Barbara, but I moved to the Midwest in uh, 2017, so I've been here for a little while. And by the way, I will not fangirl, but I was introduced to you as Elaine and... You having curly hair was the thing that made me realize I could be like beautiful with curly hair. So yeah, from there on, I've just been a major fan of you. So it's very cool to be talking to you besides the point. (laughs) Oh, thank you so much. I don't know why, but giving Julia this compliment felt so incredibly painful to listen back to. So I, I just want to let you know, I um, have been listening. I listened to your first episode of your podcast with Jane Fonda. Uh-huh. And oh my gosh, it's like lightning in a bottle. I was talking to my uh, mom-in-law about it and she worked in care facilities and stuff. And she said like, the advice you get from people that have lived so much life is like nothing like you've ever heard. Right. Where did you get the idea to start that show, Wiser Than Me? Well, I got it because 
I watched the, if you haven't seen it, this Jane Fonda documentary mm. called uh, Jane Fonda in Five Acts. It's a superb documentary and completely riveting. She's had a very expansive life. She's been at the the helm of many big shifts and changes and movements in our culture. Anyway, her life is extraordinary is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. And so I watch this and it finishes and I'm thinking to myself, I didn't really understand the scope of what she had done in her life. Yeah. And then I thought, wait a minute, we're not hearing from, we're not hearing enough from older women mm. who have experienced a shit ton of life. And I really want to hear from them. And I was thinking, I need to, I would love to hear a podcast talking to older women. And then I thought, well, maybe I should do it. And I said, I thought maybe I should do it because actually I want to glean the wisdom myself personally. Yeah. You know, I want to hear from women who've really been around the block. Because I think in our culture too, women Older women are very much um, made invisible and not given the respect that they deserve. And really, it's just, it, it is in fact an untapped natural resource we have, which is older women. Let's go. Let's listen to them. Yeah. Did you make the podcast in hopes of like sharing the advice and wisdom you wish you had earlier in life? Well, I, I will say that I, I would love to have heard my podcast when I was like in my 20s and 30s. I would have loved to have heard it. Um, you know, aging is, I mean, we're all aging, needless to say, and we're all headed in the same direction. And I sort of liken it to once you have a baby, it's like, holy crap, I had no idea it was going to be like this. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> in every way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think as a new parent, you often wish there was a proper, you know, to-do <laughs> guide list. But I, I sort of liken it to that, looking for tips to to understand the journey better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you were 21, you were on SNL when you were 21? Yeah. What was that like for you to be 21 in, in this like massive pool of entertainment? <laughs> um, well, it was really... Uh, head spinny, because I grew up in the 70s. Mm. And so I was sort of the audience for SNL when it first came on the scene back with, you know, Gilda and Jane Curtin and Belushi and Bill Murray and all the rest. And so, you know, that show spoke to me and my generation. Mm -hmm. And I just lived for it, lived for it. And there was nothing else like it. You know, it was so irreverent. And it, it just spoke to my generation, right? And then I went to the Midwest to go to college. I went to Northwestern in Chicago. Oh, no way. Yeah. And, um, and while I was there, I was doing a, a show uh, with um, my, my then boyfriend. Now he's my husband. Um, he had a theater company that he started. And we were doing a show that was a big hit in Chicago. This is between my junior and senior year. And producers from SNL came and saw the show and hired us to all go on and be in the show. Whoa. So needless to say, it was sort of very Cinderella. It was a Cinderella-like feeling. You know, it's like, oh. But once I got there, it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to no. be. Uh, and, um, you know, which in retrospect was an incredible learning opportunity. And it's informed my life ever since um, in all sorts of ways. Lauren Michaels wasn't there and it was a different set of producers. And, you know, it was just a, a, a complete, it was not great. It was not great. And it was not great for women, particularly. I know that you've explained it kind of as like a very, like messy time. Like it was very misogynistic. It was very like hard to be druggy, a woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then also you were the, were you the youngest female comedian on SNL? I think I was. Yeah. So that just, that on top of it, all of it, it just, it feels like it was the perfect storm for you to kind of just like feel out of your depths, kind of. I was out of my depth. I didn't even just feel, I mean, the fact is I was, and I didn't have the, you know, I was very green, right? Mm -hmm. I did not know, I didn't know anything about doing television, please, live television, give me a break, live, live, you know? Very few things are like that now. It's so different. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about sort of the business of show. <laughs> I didn't know that. 
do you feel like being on SNL shaped a lot of that for you? Like, did that change the way you made decisions from that point forward? Yes. Life has great moments and horrible moments. And it's really a question of how you take those really challenging moments and how you digest them and yeah. move off of them. And that's sort of, you know, a, a lot of things that happen in life, obviously you have no control over. So it's just a sure. question of how do you react? Your reaction is what you have control over. Yeah. It was really clear to me after being there, I was there for three years, that I just really, because I'd done a lot of theater in Chicago and um, with my friends um, in college, and it was insanely fun and had I a lot experienced a lot of camaraderie mm. in which creative juices were just everybody was you know all pistons firing it was like crazy yeah. um, and so I just made a decision that I would keep doing this being trying to be an actress, but only if I could find fun. If I could find the fun again, I would do it. Otherwise, I would. I would. I thought I'll pivot, but I didn't really think I would pivot because I thought I would be able to find the fun. I knew it was out there. Did you have anything that you were going to pivot to in the back of your mind? You're like, I'll figure no, that out. No, I have no other can... skills whatsoever. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I swear to you. I mean, I have a skill. I can. I'm a good eater, uh, and I'm a good. I, I'm good at buying things for myself. <laughs> So if Honestly, somebody could pay me, yeah, if somebody <laughs> could pay me to buy things for myself, that would be a job I could take. Right before you joined, I was talking, I think, to your publicist about how I I cannot buy things for myself, and I will. The only things I have that I need are things that people have heard me say I need a million times, and they've just gotten <laughs> it for me because they're like, "You will never get this for yourself." Yes. <laughs> so I'm honestly, that's a great skill that I do not have and wish I did. <laughs> So the thing that me and Julia's publicist were talking about before Julia hopped onto the call was this little timer cap that you put on all of your medication bottles that tells you the last time you opened your medication so you know the last time you took it. Um, and also update, I definitely have not bought it yet for myself, even though I continue to tell people that I should buy this. Yeah, there you go. But when you say you like decided I'm going to find the fun in it, is that been just like your metric for kind of gauging whether you take on a project um, from mm -hmm. here on out? Mm -hmm. What are some things that you look for when you're like, that's going to be fun? Well, first and foremost, material. Okay. <laughs> What's on the page? Yeah. No, for real. Because yeah. if it's if it's material that like leaps out and you're like, ooh, 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 that then so that's number one. And then the people connected to it, you you have to get a sense if get a sense of who you might be working with. So when you were introduced to the project of Seinfeld out of SNL, you were like, I'm looking for projects that I just, I find fun. What about that show where you like, this is it. Like, I want to do this. Right. Well, I did have a moment like that because Larry David was uh, on SNL my third year. He was there just for a year. And he and I sort of connected because we were both equally miserable. Perhaps he was more miserable than I. And so we just would hang out and bitch and moan a lot. Love it. And um, anyway, we'd become fr friends during that time. And then SNL ended. And then I got these scripts sent to me. My agent got them, but they were sent from Larry. And there were four scripts. And it was called, then it was called the Seinfeld Chronicles. And I read them. And I couldn't believe what I was reading because they did not resemble sitcoms that were on television. Mm. They really didn't. You know, it wasn't like traditional jokes and it was very quirky and weird. And I was completely riveted. Even though, by the way, in two of those four episodes, I had practically nothing to do in two out of the four episodes, but I was still intrigued. Wow. So I went to go and meet with Lair and Jer, and we made a deal over the weekend, and I started shooting the following week. Just super casual. Lair and Jer. You know Lair and Jer. By the way, this is Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. That yeah. happened. Is that normal that that happened so fast? Or no. is that like. No, it was completely. And I didn't have to, you know, they have this thing in, um, uh, in television and also sometimes in film where they make test deals. So that means points of your contract have all been negotiated. And what's happening is then usually you're up against a couple other people and everybody auditions and then they zero in on the one person, et cetera, et cetera. But in my case, because. I had been working on 
NBC. I had done other things for NBC in the interim after SNL. They knew me, so I didn't have to make a test deal. And so I had already been approved by NBC. That feels like a big deal to not have to go through that process. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was. It was very relaxed. It was really nice. Because I went in and I met with Jerry and Lair and Jerry was eating. You know, I barely, I kind of knew him. I'd sort of recognized his face from Carson. And he was just eating cereal. And then we just sat down and read a scene together. And it was just like... <laughs> That's very Seinfeld. It's very for him Seinfeld. To be cereal. <laughs> yeah, well, he was a b- big cereal eater. I'm, I don't yeah. know if he still is. He might be, but it had a very sort of like just uh, I don't know colleagues. Uh, colleagues that sounds very businessy. Fr- friends hanging out, feeling to it. That's what it was. Yeah. When you read Elaine in the scripts, did you see yourself in her, or how did you make yourself fit into Elaine, or Elaine fit into your personality? Yeah, I think I did see myself in her. Yeah, I, I she had kind of a assertiveness. I don't know if I'm assertive actually, but I I just tried I I just tried to make her. I guess I tried to make her like myself. I don't know. I can't really answer that. I don't really. I'm not exactly sure. I think uh, what I like about her character particularly was that she wasn't just the girl. Hmm. I think that's what appealed to me the most. She was she had so much personality. Exactly. She was, like she was so... a character. Yeah. She was just a character, one of the four people on the show, as opposed to yeah. the you know, the three guys and then the girl. Yeah. So that was interesting to me. And that was uh that was a bit of a game changer. Really it every single like lead on that show held so equally to each other. It was like the chemistry felt so natural watching it, which I'm assuming it was natural in the moment too. And it translated. Yes. And it was like the respect you guys had for each other, the respect that everyone had for Elaine and Elaine had for like, I don't know. It just felt so real to the point where I like forget it's a show when you're watching it, you know, it just feels, (laughs) it feels so genuine. And like the character of Elaine, you, you are so comfortable in yourself and and like silly and goofy and a little wacky and like eccentric and like that gives people permission to feel that way and be that way and and accept themselves in that place Mm -hmm. and genuinely as a kid watching this I was like oh okay like it's I'm not like too much like I'm okay like to be silly and to be myself and yeah I will find people that love me and accept me in a group like that oh I'm glad so I think that was a really powerful character, at least for me. And um, Yeah, and also the way she dressed yeah. because, you know, Elaine wasn't dressing sexy. <laughs> I love Elaine's style. I have like a whole Pinterest board about Elaine's style oh so I can recreate that. I just think that it was so cool. This Pinterest board I'm talking about is called Style and it was 100% real. It is not called like Elaine's style. It's just style and about... 27 photos of Elaine from Seinfeld. So you are so iconic as that role. It's so crazy. Thank you. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, Julia tells us about the times that she's had to do things scared. If you have an upcoming trip abroad, I suggest checking out Babbel. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or embarking on your first adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks, conversations about travel, relationships, business, and more. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, or German. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. Podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. I've been taking their Spanish classes, and let me tell you, being able to squeeze in a lesson in just 10 minutes has been a game-changer for staying consistent. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Elise. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash E-L-Y-S-E for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. If you know me, you know that I like to do my research, whether it's what movie I want to see or what restaurant to go to, or most importantly, which doctor I'm going to trust with my health. So it's really important to me to know going in what I'm going to get and how they can help. 
ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. ZocDoc also has one other key advantage. It lets you see patient reviews and review your doctors yourself. That means that you can see what other people loved about your potential new pick. No more second guessing, no more walking in and hoping for the best. Just a doctor you trust and hopefully a quick fix to whatever is bothering you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Elise and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Elise, spelled E-L-Y-S-E. ZocDoc.com slash Elise. Okay, so I read the crazy dance Elaine does on the show, Little Kicks. Uh-huh. Um, you workshopped that with your family. Can you tell me how that came to life? Well, my mom was happened to be visiting, and we had a table read the following day. And it got the script, and it just said, you know, she dances these uh, dances strangely. I mean, it, it, there was not much direction as to what this was supposed to be, except that it was supposed to be horrifying, right? Okay. <laughs> so I just stood in front of the mirror, and I did... I, I sort of tried to come up with physical things that looked um, incredibly unattractive and awkward. And then I went downstairs. I had like two versions and I went downstairs to the kitchen and my mom was visiting. My husband, Brad was there and I said, okay, guys, which one is worse? <laughs> and I did them both and they both chose uh, what ended up being on the show. Me and my husband work just very lightly together, and I, I love being able to work with the people I'm closest to and trust the most around me. Yes. You know, I've experienced it with my husband on multiple occasions. I mean, we've worked together my entire career. We're on SNL together. We, I was in his theater company. We did a show together uh, called Watching Ellie, which didn't last very long, but it was it was really good. You know, he directed Veep. We work together a lot. Yeah. And uh, and this podcast, something that's really fun is that my college roommate, Paula Kaplan, and I are doing the podcast together. It's just so fun. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Isn't that fun? And so um, she's doing it. My son did the music. Uh, my husband is helping with all the writing and the producing of it. Wow. It's really, it's actually been a delight. Because I, I know that you've starred in shows that you've produced, like uh, Veep and also New Adventures of Old Christine. What is it like producing a show that you're also acting in? Yeah, those are two totally different hats. I loved it. I, I wouldn't uh, do it any other way because I, I've ha I had a lot of experience by then. And so I thought that my skill set would be helpful to the team. And so it gave me the opportunity to really sort of uh, get into the weeds of each project, you know, be it the edit, be it casting, uh, whatever. Uh, that was uh, a very meaningful position to have. Did you know you wanted to do that from the get-go? No, I didn't know. Is that something you had to fight for? Yes, yes. Okay, what was that like? Well, it was a rough negotiation. It was a little bit um, in both cases, it was, they weren't so willing to give that position up to me. And uh, I mean, maybe they thought it was a vanity thing. M maybe they didn't realize they were more reluctant because I was a woman. That's possible too. But I had to push really hard to get it. You know, I had an agent and a lawyer in my corner and I was like, I gave them permission to be dogged about it. I was like, yeah, I have to have this if I'm going to do it. Did you feel like you would lose the opportunity if you pushed too hard? Like, did that make you afraid at all? Or were you like, this is the only way it can be? I think I was more like, this is the only way it can be. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really impressive. <laughs> I'm very, I'm, I'm green to this. And so I feel like I wouldn't know kind of where to press and when, where not to. Because mm. it's like, for me, it's like, I'm afraid I'm going to let someone down. And so I'm like, it's okay. But then you lose a lot of things that you think you should be fighting for with those those fears. Yeah, you got to let those go. How how would one let those go? <laughs> I mean, if it's scary, maybe just push forward through it. Ruth Reichel, who was the former editor of Gourmet Magazine and the New York Times critic, is one of our guests on Wiser Than Me. And one of the pearls of wisdom that she imparted was, you have to do things that frighten you. Yeah. And uh, and she did that multiple times in her career, including 
taking the job as b- being editor of Gourmet. She'd never, you know, edited a magazine before. So <clears throat> I think that's important to consider. I mean, don't take, don't do everything that frightens you. You know, don't jump into a a, a pit of snakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that if you... Um, have an instinct like, oh, I think I know I, I, I can bring more to this project. Um, I have skills that can be helpful here, then, you know, stick to them. I have a saying in my life specifically where I like to say, do it scared. So it's kind of the same idea of like, it's easier for me to do like take opportunities, but then in the little nuanced moments of like fighting for creative control or fighting for an edit, like the the littler things that are easy for me to just let go. It's like, that's when I'm like, never mind, I'm not going to do it scared. <laughs> so is there any, has there ever been anything in your life that, that you've just been like, I'm going to, just going to do this scared? Doing this podcast was scary. Really? Yeah. What about it scared you? Well, I'd never done anything like it before. Uh, I mean, I've been guests on podcasts and stuff, but talking to women who are like fucking accomplished you know, I'm like really accomplished older women. And I'm like, <sighs> you know, I, I really, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mean it like that. No, I'm literally sitting here talking to my idol. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. But I mean, really, it was like, it, it was just like week, at, week after week of talking to people that I, uh, revered or hyper intelligent. I wanted to make sure uh, to have the conversations be meaningful and to be authentic. Yeah. Anyway, all of that. And it's, a, again, it's a skill set that I'd never exercised before. So, you know, it was a, with a wing and a prayer, I jumped into it. The fact that the iconic Julia Louis-Dreyfus is telling me that she was scared to do her podcast is like, blowing my mind. Because every time I have interviews for my podcast, I want to cancel. Like, do you know how many interviews I have wanted to reschedule because I simply just like didn't want to do it because I was too scared? (laughs) This is awesome. Not like awesome. Like she, you know, I don't want her to be scared. I just, it's cool. We feel that way. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Who was your first guest? The, the first person I actually interviewed was um, a friend of mine, Caitlin Bristow, from like The Bachelor World. Uh-huh. And then the first episode we aired was um, Paul Feig. Oh, please. It was yeah. like, and I I botched that interview, Julia. Like, not no. botched it. Looking back, looking back, it was fine. But Paul mentioned that he wrote in the writer's room for The Office. And The mm-hmm. Office is one of my favorite shows of all time. Of and course. As soon as he mentioned that to me, it was like anything else that was written on written on that prep document could have never existed and I would never have known because it was like, I will only be talking to you now about being in writer's rooms for the next 45 minutes. What's and wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing, but it's like very insider baseball. So somebody that doesn't, you know, isn't interested in that. I was like, I've just blown this conversation into the ground. <laughs> like, except to say, except to say that I would argue that that was a very authentic reaction. And I'm guessing that came through in the conversation. And who cares if it's inside baseball? A writer's room is interesting. You could talk about a writer's room for fucking 10 hours straight. I mean, it's wild. It's wild. So I'm, I think that's cool that you did that. In In that case, you sort of, maybe without realizing it, you trusted your instincts and you followed them. So good on you, I say. Thank you. Time for another break. And when we get back, Julia tells us about her upcoming projects. Guys, if you haven't tried Vior yet, there is a reason why they are blowing up right now. Their clothing is just straight up quality. Not only does Viore have high quality joggers and athletic wear, they also have super versatile coats and jackets. I have their Sherpa hooded trench and it really comes in handy when it snows a bunch here in Omaha. I love when clothes are super cute and super functional. Plus, Viore is 100% offsetting their carbon footprint. They're also reducing and offsetting 100% of their plastic footprint from 2019 and beyond. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Viore is super comfortable and super versatile. Try their pieces out for yourself at viore.com slash Elise. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Elise, spelled E-L-Y-S-E. 
Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash Elise and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. I feel like we're always having to learn new tips and tricks for managing our mental health, right? Maybe it's because the world keeps on throwing new things at us day after day. It makes sense. We'd need to adapt and find new ways to cope with anxiety, depression, and more. HERS offers access to mental health care that can support you in your day-to-day, including dealing with anxiety and depression. At ForHers.com, you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted mental health medication if it's right for you. The process is 100% online, including free unlimited check-ins, provider messaging, and support along the way. Plus, to make things even simpler, you can get your first month of treatment for just $25 if prescribed. To get started, go to ForHers.com slash Elise. That's ForHers.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. I really love that you don't need insurance to use HERS. It's all a part of the mission to make finding support as simple and painless as possible. Get started today at ForHERS.com slash Elise. That's ForHERS.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. Offer only available if prescribed. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Subscription required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Is there anything that you have in your mind that you're like, okay, well, now that I've done this, maybe I'd be interested in doing this? I've got some movies lined up that I have to do. You know, I'm playing a different kind of role and I get to fight and shit like that. So that'll be fun. Is this the Marvel? So when I say like the Marvel, I mean the Marvel universe, all of all of the planets and people. Okay. I don't know anything about the Marvel Universe, actually. Yeah, so I'm going off to do the Thunderbolts, and that'll be crazy. How do you how do you feel about that, being in the Marvel Universe? Well, I did it to impress my kids, and I think they're impressed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and now I'm going off, and I was, on the, I was on a Zoom with a stunt person the other day talking me through what it is we have to do. <laughs> So we'll see. Are you like training? Do you have to train for the fights and like choreograph all of them? You know, uh, I think there's a cor- there is a choreograph something or other that I've got to get into, but I'm not like flying through the air. I don't have superpowers per se like that. Yeah. So I'm not getting down. I'm not going to set two months in advance and, and doing the workout and stuff like that. Not that I don't work out, but you know what I mean? But honestly, imagining you hooked up to a like harness and just flying through the air is quite amazing yeah, but, if but just imagine it, it, that <laughs> isn't that is amazing and also it's not going to happen so don't i know but maybe don't wish one day for it. <laughs> yeah maybe one day um and then so I, that's one of the movies and then the other movie is uh you hurt my feelings right can you tell me a little bit about what that movie is about and what, what that was like working on it yes that is a movie that i made with a uh director named nicole hall of center who uh for your listeners if they've never uh seen a Nicole Hall of Center movie, which I'm sure they have, but if they haven't, she's an amazing writer-director. She and I worked together uh, on a movie called Enough Said with James Gandolfini. She's done multiple films. Another great movie of hers is Walking and Talking. And this is her most recent film, You Hurt My Feelings. And um, it is a really, I think, a very interesting story about a couple who've been married uh, successfully, happily married for many years. And they have a, a grown son, you know, he's in his early 20s. And the the woman in this couple, whose name is Beth, and this is a character that I played, is a writer. And um, she's written a memoir, and now she's written a second book. And um, her husband has been giving her nothing but accolades and support and love and admiration all about this book and how much he loves it, et cetera, et cetera, this new book that she's written. And the book is not getting the response uh, that she from her agent that she was hopeful that it would. And all of a sudden in the film, she overhears her husband saying that he actually hates the book. And so it's a movie about uh, trust and 
and it's gutting, and it just propels all sorts of stuff. I mean, That's my worst nightmare. Yes, it's your worst nightmare. I That's think right. it's worse. I think it's worse than infidelity, I, because it is a kind of infidelity. It's a it's a deep, profound lie, and so all of a sudden, it just throws into question everything in her life, the foundation of her marriage, the foundation of her life. And that's what the film is about. So it's sort of a small thing about a big thing. I'm excited for people to see it, I think. And it's, and it's funny. And it's very funny. This is just such a deep, like, lie. This is so, it's just, if I ever heard my husband speaking like that about me and my work without ever being honest to me, I would like I would literally be like, I've never heard of you in my life. Stonewall, cold, not even a fight. Just like, you're dead to me. <laughs> Listen, do I wish I was kidding? Yes. But Jonas would be the first person to tell you that this is 100% an accurate response for me. <laughs> like, exactly. I would be so gone. <laughs> That's right. It's over. You are not who I thought you were. And what, what was that process like to do a movie? Because you've, you've produced other movies before. Yes. Making a, a film is is its own sort of beast, as it were. I mean, it's, you know, it has an, it, it has an end in sight. Uh, when yeah. you're doing a series, you know, it's sort of this on, you're like on a treadmill, you know, if you're lucky, by the way, you're on a treadmill and it keeps yeah. going, if you're lucky. But a film has a, a, a proper end. And so, it's a different kind of approach. But I, I, I loved, I was working with a uh, two other producers with whom I've worked before, um, Anthony Bregman and Stephanie Aspazazu, and I just can't tell you how much I love them. So it was just a, it had a nice camaraderie to it. That's amazing. I cannot wait to watch it. Julia, thank you so much for being on my podcast. This was so cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Lovely to talk to you. Good luck with your um, podcast and your whole entire life. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Make sure to check out her podcast from Lemonade Media, Wiser Than Me, and keep an eye out for her film, You Hurt My Feelings. If you like the show, give us a rating and a review. It helps other people find us. Okay. Be back next week. Bye. There's more Funny Cause It's True with Lemonada Premium. You get access to all of Lemonada's premium content, including My Five Questions with Julia Louis-Dreyfus coming out this Friday. Subscribe now in Apple Podcasts. Funny Cause It's True is a Lemonada Media and Powder Keg production. The show is produced by Claire Jones, Zoe Dennis, and Linnea Tony. Our associate producer is Tiffany Bowie. Rachel Neal is our senior director of new content, and our VP of weekly production is Steve Nelson. Executive producers are Stephanie Whittles-Wax, Jessica Cordova-Kramer, Paul Feig, Laura Fisher, Kessla Childers, and me, Elise Myers. This show is mixed by Johnny Vince Evans, additional help from Noah Smith and Ivan Kryev. Our theme song music was written by me and scored by Xander Singh. Follow Funny Cause It's True wherever you get your podcasts or listen ad-free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. If you love Lemonada content, a quick, easy, and free way to help us keep our shows running is to fill out our anonymous listener survey. By just answering a few questions, you can help us find new brands to connect with and also share feedback about show content you'd like to see across the network. And even better, once you've completed the survey, you can enter for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. The survey is short and sweet and will help us play ads you don't want to skip and also keep bringing you content you love. Just go to lemonadamedia.com survey. Last Day from Lemonada Media explores the moments that change us. Those times where you look back and say, whoa, one day I was myself and the next I wasn't. I'm Stephanie Whittles-Wax and I have seen time and time again how sharing these stories can change lives. So do you have a moment in your life that changed you fundamentally and forever? What happened? How did you move through it? And how did you eventually start again? If you'd like to share your story, go to bit.ly slash lastdaystories, B-I-T dot L-Y slash lastdaystories. We can't wait to hear from you. 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 We can't wait to hear from you.